who are you working with first? Yeah, I'm with 17 News, the local NBC station. Yes. So we're just going to interview you about what happened and how you got here. In December of 2016, eight months pregnant Katrina Rivera went missing. Several days later, her fiance Manuel Vela was chased down by the police leading to the discovery of her mutilated body in the back seat of a car. Not only did he kill Katrina, but he then cut their unborn son from her stomach with a box cutter, and at some point before being caught, killed the infant as well. So yesterday, what happened with your girlfriend? What Will you be, with Katrina? excuse me, would you be uh, doing this live or as No, it's a, not live, it's just recorded. Documentary, what are you trying to We're doing it for the questions. news. For the rest? Uh, no, for the news. For the interest of just that NBC? So or? you can get your side of the story, what happened out. So you can I don't really know quite what, what, what you got on your side of the fence. We just work for the news station. No, about my side of what happened with the situation. At. Yeah, we just want to know your side. Because I don't know exactly if I could put myself in any trouble at all by saying... So you don't have to say anything that you feel is going to get you in trouble. You don't have to answer all the questions. All right, I could answer some questions. That's exactly how you said. Okay. Yeah, answer the questions however you feel. If you don't want to answer any of the questions, you don't have to. Oh, that's fine. I understand. You can proceed. You can so what happened yesterday? How did, how did this all start? What this is... Um, 12, 8, that's when this all started about how this person ended up dead, Katrina Rivera, with the baby cut out. And, uh. Did you cut the baby out of her? Yes, I did. Although he shows concern that answering any questions might incriminate him, Vela almost immediately admits cutting the baby from his girlfriend's stomach. Disturbingly, there is very little emotion to go with this horrific revelation. It should also be noted that he refers to his girlfriend as this person. Consciously or not, he is distancing himself from her. This could either be to diminish his connection to her or to make it less personal in his mind to cope with what he has done. Why? Prove a point to... Uh religion. Isn't it your baby? It's not our baby. Yes. So what point were you proving? First and foremost to uh, defy every religion based politic politi political to defy every law of any God creation of a book. Uh, you understand? Yeah. So did you think what you were doing was the right thing, or did you realize it was going to kill her? Well, we quite, as a team, you know, from extraterrestrial to religion to science, understand a, a voyage of um, telepathy and somewhat of a um, higher power vested in us as a, a team, me and Katrina Rivera. So. We, I understood, yes, that I was going to kill her. She understood that she had to die. His reasoning is bizarre. It seems to have been some type of protest against pro-life religion or political leanings, but it is difficult to understand what he hoped to accomplish. He claims that Rivera understood that she was going to die and chose to go through with it. But at this point, he can make any claim, since she is no longer alive to dispute it. A wound on his face, however, is a possible indication that there was a struggle. And she was okay with that? Well, that's it. She said that, it, yes. So, were you guys on drugs before you did this? No, not at all. Was it something that you had planned for a long time to do? Well, it wasn't really something we planned on to do since uh, Jesus returned back when he was hanging on those crosses, three crosses, right here in the back of the Canyon Hills, what you represented, hello, as they did back in 2000, you know, before Christ and after Christ, whatever, after death, whatever they want to 
mix it up right now a little bit with you. To say the least, um, I was capable of a lot better. I could have went with this other option, but I just respected the plan and authority of the Father, so the Holy Spirit went in and said, hmm, What was the other it? option? Leaving and going the path of uh, defying the Father. Do you guys have any other kids together? Now he's saying that God told him to do this. His inability to stick to one story for more than a few minutes, coupled with his slightly slurred speech and exaggerated facial movements, make it hard to believe him when he says he hasn't been using drugs, although he is telling the truth. No matter of fact, we uh, have Madeline and Bella, yes. When they were born, did you guys consider doing anything like this with them? Oh, these are first facts of uh, what are you talking about? Yes. So why with this baby? Oh, this baby? Mm -hmm. Because uh, as a as a, as a father who I am, I'm facing these things as an antichrist, regardless of uh, any nature of a uh, humankind come in contact with the uh, mm, she's saying uh, you know a higher being as our uh, presence of uh, brain you know will go and smack as a whole nation as one as every you know other individual seven nations and say hey whose brain are you you like my flesh you know I look at you and just say hey me how you like my brain huh? well that's fine and get back to the topic and say, well, uh, accepted the fact that it was, it was going to come and the kids didn't know a lot about it. They just had to act like we're just humans and say, that's fine. You know, mental illness rules rock on, you know. So when, when yesterday did you take the baby out? When yesterday, well, this was, was on the... Was um, before the police okay, came or after they came? This was before. I took him out about seven hours prior. I took, killed her on the 8th. Late night at 9-11, but is that front porch of a, our house in 2213 Fairfax. And she wanted me, but off the subject, put her in a car or whatnot, drove down, did whatever. And, uh, you know, had some time to my father and just be with it. So was the baby alive at first? No. You know, kept a little hour, six hours uh, to myself, just with her dead in the back seat side of the road somewhere over on Cottonwood and just had a time to reflect what me and my father had uh, you know, been sitting here to do. Vela alternates between babbling incoherently and being able to give clear details such as his address, the location of where he parked the car with Rivera's body, and what he did. At this point, more information is needed to determine if he is being influenced by drugs or if he is suffering from a mental illness. Antichrist to Jesus, Satan to Jesus Christ, what I, and we just talk about how we're gonna proceed and whatever we understand about how do we communicate, and then put into the plan and effect which route we took. So then, therefore, we just went, okay, I got back in the car, drove to the mission over there on Edison Highway, just relaxed right there, wait till. It's called a prophecy for failure. Everybody involved, we're not human nature. And then that's why I uh, stood for a little bit. And that's why I cut her open when he told me to. When who told you to? Uh, the father. It's just the same one who was to communicate with uh, Jesus Christ is when he was here. So, are, do you think that you're possessed by the devil? Me? Yeah. I'm the Antichrist. I'm capable of taking simple business of any God that ever said the Creator was here to defy the law of anything that I ever said that I was Adam from the first, you know, to understand the flesh of pleasure. After proclaiming himself to be the Antichrist, 
it's looking more and more apparent that Vela has some form of mental illness. He is clearly delusional and in need of a mental evaluation. If he has had similar events in the past, Rivera may have very well pretended to go along with him to appease him, not realizing how dangerous he was or else she may have been trying to get him away from their other children. It take it to put it into a soul, you know, the inside and out. The firstborn, that's me, yeah, it's me. The perfect specimen, that's it. That's it, the definition of, uh, um, to fulfill something nobody else ever will ever compare to. So do you feel bad that your girlfriend and your baby are dead? Oh yeah, um, um, I take it, he take it easy on her. I take it easy on her, so no. I'm for more stuff, so not, but um, I don't feel bad. Anything else you want to ask, Jack? Hey, how'd you do it? What instructions did you get to fulfill the request from your father. How did you go through this killing your girlfriend and the baby and look right at her? How did I do it was I let it start as a child to keep a secret of knowing about uh, was it society, how they kept a secret from when Jesus was here. I'm not sure what quite your religion is. I don't care to ask anymore. But I respect the fact that uh, Jesus Christ, as when he uh, came back and rose in his beliefs and put it in a book, after that, a little mixed up. I'll start over. How did you get your instructions and what instructions did you get? Excuse. Oh, right. When I was seven, that's when it says uh, put him in effect. Yeah, a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And through all that time, you'd hear these voices over and over again? Well, he'd take it you? and say, go left, and I had to go right. And I get, he's in an Asian spaceship or something. So you already. So I had to learn every process Got of it. how he really had to communicate. Say, go right, and I go left. Got it. So you did pretty much opposite of that. In the process of, of going through this, how did you kill your girlfriend and the baby? And what instructions did you get in order to do that? Well, he, throughout that whole time of just saying shut up before I die, because he threatens me. Is that right? We see, yes. So what were your emotions at that time, and why did you do it, and how did you do it? He not longer threatened me after I told me one time, go left, and I went right. Mm -hmm. He said, define me, do what you do, and just do it the right way. What was that way? What did you come up with? What was your way of, to do this? Oh, he said, just do it as you were alone in the garden. And did you use any instruments, tools? Did you use your hands? Yeah, he gave me uh, instructions of uh, a razor blade that he provided me in the garden when no one else was there. An exacto knife, or was it a utility knife? Still trapped in his delusions, Vela makes a statement that might indicate that he has been hearing voices from the age of seven. He also believes himself to be special in some way, powerful and set apart from others. Just about a razor blade then. And you did all of this with the razor blade? You did the C-section with the razor blade? Yes. What were your thoughts through that process? My thing just taking the baby, cutting it as if I was some was it savage or beast by myself? Yeah. So you had some insight into the future of this baby and you were doing what? No, I get out and just say, he lets me loose. He lets me out. He says, like, she run it down and just, hey, what am I doing? I'm just trying to do like 20,000 things at once, yeah. but I'm focused on one thing. And I'm, I'm cutting, I'm cutting like that. But why this whole, as a whole, is still in, process of watching me is paranoia. But so, at the same time, it's it's like I'm doing this and he lets me, yeah. Gotcha, I gotcha. So it was pretty intense then, wasn't it? 
Uh, it's just set my face. Uh, I would imagine. Yeah. I didn't can't figure ten and ten. How did you get her in the possession to do this? Did you guys agree to do this? Did she lay down on the bed somewhere? Talk to me about that. And, and well, I killed her at the house. We set this plan up about a couple, I would say, hundred thousand years ago. But we said Jesus Christ here before that, and then we say we're here, hell, Satan. Let's lie. Let's take it back from two thousand mm -hmm. years ago. Jonathan, John the Baptist, his soul, and he's here, and every prophet from every generation, from any bloodline that's ever been uh, in in association with that back in Jerusalem. So was it your idea to clear this bloodline? Was well, to connect as a nation, as we're saying, the Easy Christ. Okay, now, you mentioned something a minute ago that you are the Antichrist. But I see, but I see, yes. Okay, tell me, is this by proxy? How were you appointed this? The fact of power of us in this whole as a understanding of how do we communicate with the Father and the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and the Son is sitting in between. So, well, it has a process of elimination. It, Does this cause you stress um, through all this process of being arrested, killing your girlfriend, killing the baby? And talk to me about how you feel right now. Do you think that you've done exactly what you were told to do? Clear that up for me. Well, we fulfilled a um, pretty magnificent uh, creation, man, to say our fact. Yes, it says a uh, very excited for the next uh, process of uh, experience. As uh, um, I would imagine to tell you, uh, nothing will ever be the same, yes. Yeah. And you're right, nothing will ever be the same. You hear those voices now, are they talking to you and telling you how to respond to our questions? <clears throat> what appears the bone and the sharpest instrument, which is the Creator, I mean, kiss hallelujah. In your vernacular, okay, I got you. We'll say separate the marrow from the bone, it is. And where do you stand with that analogy? What's your feelings? I say, we well, you fear into religion, anything of anywhere. It's a world as a nation where just have to represent myself and my lonely tattoos and my figure of, hey, look at me. Mm. It's as a, as a human. What was your girlfriend's thoughts? I mean, if you discussed all of this, take me through that. Tell me her demeanor, her mindset, and how you guys came up with this idea. Well, say, tell you the truth, I said, I would ask you a religion first off before answering that. Is she the same religion as you? It's eternity, yes. Okay. With that in mind, take me through that process of what you two discussed prior to killing her. With a process of uh, the deed? Mm -hmm. While Vela can become quite eloquent about the hidden meanings behind his actions and the voices, he has trouble making it all connect. There are small pauses where he seems confused about how it all fits together, but these only last mere moments before he is off on another tangent. Or the whole just how it started through the night. Yeah, how you started. I, I, I don't need the details. What I need to know is why you... As a prophecy, like we're talking about religion, we're going to just go and say, you know, just a functionable uh, way of putting it to society. Functional way to put it to society. Go ahead and take me through that. That I Well, uh, it's very well, as I told you, beginning, I say right and you say left. You go right. I say I hate you, which means I love you. Mm -hmm. So you say, turn around and talk to it uh, behind my back, as in a social society, which is a secret and that no one else will understand unless they're in it. Is that why the in the history that you have with the spousal abuses, you were convicted on, I think, a couple of those and arrested a couple of times. Is this all part of that process that got you to where you're at right now? Oh, absolutely. Say it again? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Why? But we could have went about 20 different little routes, 10 precise, that's it. Mm -hmm. But we had to give them chances and chances to understand and succeed and say, what do you want to do? This is talking to the highest powers, not the four founding fathers of his nation or 
Islam or right, any right, right. It's present time right now. capable uh, seven nations where is that of any religion we had to give them because we're all as one this is king of all kings the city lord of all lords and it's the city when his history of domestic violence is brought up he readily admits to it but almost immediately deflects from it by tossing together a word salad of religious terms if he continues in this state he might be declared mentally unfit to stand trial. Not to change subjects on you right now, but we were kind of under a deadline, and I want to give you every opportunity in the world to say what happened. But if we could summarize now, come to a finalization here, take me through the day when you decided that you had to kill her and the baby to where you got arrested, putting the baby down on the street corner. Take me through all of that. Okay, it was a... Uh was it Wednesday Wednesday afternoon my daughter's a queen angel might not I ever ask anybody that's actually has nothing to um, was it to do with my social circle queen angel as a fact busted from there on she said this is Sunday well, let's get it so I had to go and put it in effect to that night as the father, the highest, the highest of uh, authority, so and made it a process. It made it a process of just following through on whatever, whatever, and however, however they proceeded as one to actually have her dead on the floor, put her in the trunk. I mean, put her in the back seat of the car, drive, have a, some alone time, talk to the father. And then go on and proceed, and, and I was do as I as I chose as a human, because I'm still as as human as a man. That's me, along with everything else, any of a, of a, a nation, of any other belief of a god actually here. So, what was her thoughts when you were cutting? Was she alive when you cut? No, the she baby was out? dead. And how did you do that? She, she was dead about um, from nine to to seven, I think. I, I think I put her open at seven eleven. How did you kill her? I socked her and I choked her. And then the baby, once you cut the baby out, how did you kill the baby? I killed her, Katrina Rivera, right there. How? I strangled her. At the house? Yes. And then hours later you went to Edison and then cut the baby out? Yes. How do you feel? With all of this, you've completed your instructions and you are the Antichrist, how do you feel about this that you've done now? I said remorse, that's it. Why the remorse? I said I don't need to where that I just describe it. Yeah, I bet that's tough. Goodness. Yes. Do you cut away? Uh, yeah. Where on Edison did you cut the baby off? You said you went to Edison Highway, right? In a garden? Was it actually in a garden? No, it was right on the side. Well, side of the road? Yeah. But like, uh, by what? By the mission, by the um, homeless shelter. Oh. And no one saw you? No. Was it in the middle of the day, at night? Well, I recorded it throughout the process. I was recording, yes. You recorded it? Oh, uh, yeah. Like with your cell phone? Yes. What'd you do with that recording? Oh, somewhere in the car. Yeah. Why did you record it? Uh, for no particular reason. The detective struggles to get any kind of usable information out of Bela. Shockingly, he tells them that he has recorded the removal of the baby. If this is true, and not just part of his delusion, it is a hefty piece of evidence against him. If the sound was on and he was speaking, it could also help give insight into his mental state during the horrific event. To come up with something fast because he likes tricking me say here do something with this when they ask you that so i gotta just get total freestyle with whatever you're asking me so yeah that's what i did left it in the car anything else you want to add i had to ask um what are you gonna do with this uh, recording of me uh we're going to do a new story. We've been doing the, the story since she was missing, so we're going to do a new story with this. 
Oh, have you now? Mm -hmm. A question I've got too. On Sunday, that's when our what we call a BOA went out. That's be on the lookout, and it's a uh, missing person at risk. It was Friday. Yeah, was that was Friday? Was that Friday that you and she decided to go on your venture? And this was a uh, Thursday on the eighth. And then Friday, she didn't show, and everybody started looking. What were your thoughts when the cops pulled up behind you, and you're not pulling over? Well, see the figure to, hey, how I look. How are you? So you didn't care? Well, it's all just for a purpose, so I didn't really actually care. Oh, I see. No. I talked with a witness, said that they saw you with the baby in your arms. Was the baby in the car with you during this chase? And then nah, it's a whole complicated situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I got my guys that with suits right here, the sheriff's department shouts out. I look to my loves of my life with authority to figure this to be a professional, you know. So with the baby in your arms and you get out Law of the car and you go up the street and down the street? Uh, it was real fun, actually, to praise my father out loud. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. and great glory be to God. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Well, it was actually pretty fun. It amazed me. Yeah. And why? So, so fun. It so, was fun? Oh, absolutely. The adrenaline rush? The excitement? No, it was just all at once. It was just like, hey, do I look, God? Am I blessing you now? Hello, everybody who says no. So yes. you were doing that for God's approval? Oh, absolutely. It's just no word and no one and I was, everybody else in between between that had nothing function about anything in my progress of my report who I had to do it for. Well, it's cool. I respect the manner, but. He describes the events as exciting and seems to get another rush in the retelling. The euphoria is a sign of manic behavior. Hey, I felt just relaxed and relieved. Okay, do what you do. So I gave it to them, their turn. Chase me, I act stupid, whatever whatever you had to do with it. They know who I'm talking about. I can't represent as a, you know, hey, you're pretty fine specimen. I see you in your brain before you even ask me. Thank you, you know? I just gotta represent and act as if I'm just a normal, productive citizen of society. I never was. So God approved of what you did and he praised you for it? Oh, absolutely, hippies, yes. Thank you. Now, are you hearing those voices at all now? I'll tell communicating mm -hmm. with my father? Yes, sir. Oh, I see, absolutely, you're not hearing. You're not hearing now? You're hearing. I'm hearing. As me, I'm coming to you. Understood, so through you, he speaks. Okay. Understood. Yes, yes. Anything else you want to add that we haven't asked you? I don't know if father is to ask you a question at all. No, we're just making sure that you have gotten to say everything you wanted to say. This is your time, your turn, anything you want to say. So if there's anything else that you want to say that we've overlooked or neglected, let us know. Go ahead and tell us what you, what you want. Well, the act of uh, appreciating you coming down here, taking that time, mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, acknowledging my mental illness, you know, praise and worship to them, whoever they are, on medication for whatever kind of illness, uh, you know, the brain brings. But uh, well, I don't know if it's this important or not as a situation at hand, killing a baby. Cause I didn't kill the baby. I breathed in him. I, you know, I had some personal time with the little relationship. Oh, my firstborn son looked just like me, you know. Hold him, pat him. You know, a dead woman in the back. I take a relaxation and relax and say, okay, situation at hand. Hmm. You know, do whatever I had to do as a human, I guess. Are you glad that this has all come to a conclusion? No. Uh, Tell me why. Uh, based on, uh, there's a lot of dishonor, which is recognition of, of who I am, but with the realization of not caring about, uh, just saying, hey, you're telling the truth, but we still got to play along that you're mentally ill. 
Hallelujah. Bala can describe his actions, but he has no real grasp on the nature of what he has done. He doesn't see Rivera or the baby as real living people. At this point, at least to him, they are merely props helping him live out his delusions. The reporters end the interview, little knowing that he will never make it to trial. After nearly a month of medication, Vela, after possibly being in a mental state capable of realizing what he had done, hanged himself in his cell.